All right, what's up y'all? Welcome back to another video. In this video, we'll be working on the budget build, of course. Uh, we got a lot of stuff to do, so let's get straight to it. All right, so in the previous video, uh, we made a brand new subframe. Um, I'm very pleased with the end result, uh, but that did mean that we had to take out all the electronics uh, that usually uh, live inside the old subframe. Uh, so now we have relays, rectifiers, fuses, stuff like that, uh, just dangling around. So we gotta figure out a place uh, to keep those, and even in the future, perhaps a, a battery. So what I want to do is make a, a battery or an electronics box uh, under the seat right here or the subframe. Stuff all that in there. After we've done that, I would like to install the rear light. So we've got to come up with a fender so that we can mount that uh, rear light on there. So uh, we got lots of stuff to do. So let's uh, start with the box. I feel like that's the hardest part. So uh, let's get straight to it. All right, so I have this uh, steel plate laying around. It's two millimeter thick, which for an electronics box is definitely overkill. Uh, but like I said, it's what I have laying around. So it's kind of saves a, a, us a little bit on our budget. So that's nice. Um, we're gonna trace some lines on here, get a general idea of the shape of the subframe. After that, we'll make some cuts and uh, mock it up. All right, so we gotta get a, a couple of measurements. So to here, from here to basically here would be 27 centimeters. Uh, that sounds good. So we gotta write that down. After that, this piece be, let's say about nine centimeters. So we can copy that for the other side as well. And we wanna have it not too big. So let's make it around five centimeters and we can decide on how low or high we wanna have it hang in. So that means 27 meters by five centimeters, nine centimeters by five centimeters. Then we'll have our sides. We'll mock that up, uh, put some steel under there, trace some lines, cut that, weld it to it, and we'll be done. Back to the subframe, let's see how this looks. Basically something like this. Yeah, that's way too big. Uh, I didn't factor in that the brace, of course, uh, is gonna be on there, so we're not able to push it a little bit higher. Um, let's see. All right, so this tube or brace or whatever you want to call it it's kind of in the way to tuck it a bit higher because right now this is this is way too big uh, so I'm going to make some quick marks right here cut that part out hold it up uh, against it again see whether we like our fit or that we have to shave off uh, an entire part but let's make some quick marks right here right, so this is where that brace or that tube uh, sits so we're just uh, gonna cut this out, hold it up against it, see the whether it'll uh, fit a little bit nicer. I think it would. Uh, let's just cut it out. So we made our cut, so the brace isn't in the way anymore. Let's see, I'm gonna have it flush on with the top side so it doesn't interfere with our seat. I think this uh, would look pretty good. I think it would also be nice if it were to follow the line of the subframe, so something like that. Add a couple centimeters so it doesn't create a gap right there. I think we are going to shave up just a little bit off the top, but for a general uh, shape, I think this looks uh, pretty dang good. Um, so we're gonna cut this part off, then we'll copy it for the other side. And that should give us a general idea. All right, first parts of our sides uh, are done, or at least for now. They are uh, same size, so that should be good. Already took some measurements of what the bottom plate should be. Uh, in the rear, it should be about 
20 centimeters wide in the front because it's kind of tapered in it should be about 17 and a half or not about 17 and a half and if I'm correct I believe this is 22 centimeters yeah, so like this uh, should be about 22 uh, so let's make a quick drawing on here with all our measurements cut it out see whether this will fit on that I guess then we'll tack them together uh, squeeze it in the subframe and hopefully uh, it'll be good All right, so we made our cuts. Uh, obviously, it's not holding together <laughs> very well. Um, but this is basically the general idea. Uh, like I said earlier, we are going to add a front so that it'll fit nicely uh, with the subframe. So let's see if we can squeeze this in here and get a little bit of a general idea of uh, how it's going to look. So this isn't exactly uh, working out the way I thought it would. Um, but I hope that you can get like a general idea of uh, what I want to have it uh, looking like. As you can see, it does uh, fit pretty nicely in here. I think uh, if we start welding this thing uh, uh, together uh, piece by piece, I think it should look uh, pretty good. Uh, in fact, that's what I'm going to do right now. Just a couple of tack welds um, uh, so we can get a little bit of a better idea how we are going to add uh, the front uh, of the box. All right, so we got it uh, in between our uh, subframe right now. We just jammed it in there for a little bit uh, of a mock-up. As you can see, the line uh, lines uh, flow pretty good. Follows the line of the uh, suspension mount right here. So pretty happy with that. Also seems to be pretty level uh, when I look like this. So I'm gonna take a look uh, at it like this. So that seems uh, pretty good. So all we have to do right now is add uh, something to the front right here because this feels like a very uh, sudden stop. So I feel like if we add a little bit more to the front, uh, gives it a little bit more of a shape and that should uh, make it look pretty good. So I'll add this piece right here. After that, we'll figure out a way to uh, actually mount it to the subframe because right now it's just loose as you can see. Um, Looking pretty good. All right, we're almost done uh, mocking up our electronics box. As you can see right here, I added a little play to it. It's got a nice little curve to it to accommodate for the frame right here. You can probably also tell that these two plates are a little bit on the long side, so We'll trim this and give it a nice little curve. After uh, we've uh, trimmed these parts, all we have to do is uh, make a rear section right here so we can shut it. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to finish uh, trimming and welding uh, our box. Uh, after, we're, uh, after I'm done with that, uh, I'll show you the end result and we'll figure out a way to actually mount it in our subframe. All right, so the battery box uh, is all done. I uh, had a little bit of a case of tunnel vision. As you can see, uh, I started polishing uh, the bottom and uh, that worked out uh, pretty well. It's very shiny, but as you can also tell, there's all these dark spots. And it was like, well, that's probably from uh, the angle grinder with the flappy disc. Uh, so if I uh, sand the sides down, uh, that it would be a little bit better, or at least that uh, was what I was hoping for. But as you can see uh, right here, it's uh, still uh, quite shiny, but you can still see these dark spots. Even though I sanded out uh, all of the deep scratches, I'm not sure how we are uh, going to fix that. 
Um, I am going to move on for now, so we're going to put it in the bike and see how we uh, mount that up. Um, maybe uh, later in the video I'll start then sending it down or maybe we'll just give them some paint, I don't know. Uh, let's put it in the bike. So if we had a little bit more budget, what I would have done is just uh, drill holes in the side, uh, weld in some steel bungs in the, in the subframe and uh, bolt it down that way. Um, I'm already almost uh, over our budget, so that's uh, unfortunately not a possibility. Um, I think I'm just going to, uh, instead of have actual bunks, just drill four holes, so two on each side. I feel like a regular uh, nut is like four millimeter, the frame is two millimeters, so that should be enough, besides the fact that's already like pretty stuck in here, as you can see. So I feel like with four bolts, each having two millimeters of thread should be uh, enough. Uh, but there's only one way to find out, of course. So uh, let's uh, make a couple marks on where we want to uh, bolt it down. Uh, drill those holes, do the same thing for the subframe, uh, bolt it down and see whether they'll uh, hold or not. It's in, it's uh, definitely not the prettiest, but it'll uh, do. Um, yeah, like I said, if I were to have a bit more budget, I would definitely use some uh, steel bunks. Would make uh, life easier. I also feel like it would be uh, a bit more secure, but I don't think it's going anywhere. Uh, in the future, I probably will put some Loctite on here just in case so the vibrations uh, don't get these bolts loose. But as you already saw, uh, saw earlier, the, the box is pretty stuck within the frame as well. So that in combination with four uh, eight millimeter, millimeter bolts would be uh, absolute overkill. So um, happy that this finally is done. Uh, let's move on to the next thing that we want to tackle, which is a rear fender. Um, I want to reuse the old uh, rear fender and I'm uh, going to have to mock it up somehow. Uh, so let's take that thing apart, let's see, uh, let's mock it up and see how we are going to uh, mount that thing on here. Right, so this is the uh, old fender, the original fender, as you can see it's pretty crusty, it's got a couple of speed holes. Uh, but this is the se this section uh, I don't want to use, I think I'm going to cut it right here. Or maybe even here uh, but in order to do that we need to take off the lights and hopefully we can sell that um, so let's take off this thing first As you can see, we uh, got it off. Uh, it was pretty hard, but eventually uh, we did it, so that's good. As you can see, this real rear fender is super nasty and also super crusty. Just peel the metal off. Uh, this section we're definitely not gonna use, uh, but probably we'll only use like this part or something. Um, I am going to clean it up a little bit because it's just kind of disgusting to have all this stuff uh, floating around right here. So I'm going to clean up a little bit and we'll be right back. All right, so uh, we got the worst uh, out, but as you can see, it's super rusty. So no matter what I do, it's, you can just literally stab it. So that's going to happen. Um, like I said, we're probably just going to use this part or maybe even just this. Um, so it doesn't really matter that that part's bad. This part, this rust feels super superficial. So I think with like a wire brush we can take it off. Let's see.
I mean, those are some pretty big results. I mean, it's not going to be like new, but it's definitely a whole lot better. So with like 15, 15, probably like two minutes of just dragging this thing along here, I think we can clean this up pretty good. So let's mark it up on the bike, see which part, which part we want to use. We can cut the rest off and clean up the part that we actually are going to use. Let's see. That oh, doesn't even fit. Bruh. All right, so we have our uh, fender cut. I haven't cleaned it up yet, um, but I uh, want to give it a quick little mock-up to see what it would look like and whether we would actually uh, like it or not. So uh, let's mock this thing up. Oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. Let's see what happens if we pull it a little bit back. We also uh, have a uh, new light, new rear light right here. It's got LEDs in it. I think it looks uh, pretty nice, pretty old school. At the same time, LEDs, so it's pretty uh, pretty bright. So you get a general idea of where we would like it to have that. Yeah, I think this would look pretty good. Uh, I mean, obviously we have to cut this stuff right here so it would flow a little bit more with the rest of the bike, but I do kind of like this curve and that it's going just a little bit down right here. I want to mount the license plate somewhere around here so they'll, the rear fender will actually catch uh, some water. Uh, but I think this looks pretty good. It is pretty low uh, compared to the to the wheel. Like it's pretty close to the wheel like this. Um, um, so I'm not sure whether this is enough clearance, but we'll find out soon enough. If it doesn't, we can maybe like uh, have like a cut here so we can uh, lift it up a little bit. But I think this looks pretty good. All right, our fender's cut. I uh, think the shape looks pretty good. Um, we haven't deburred uh, the edges and stuff like that, so we uh, gotta work on that, but it feels pretty symmetrical, so good enough for now. Uh, we still have our markings on here on where we want to uh, have it meet with the subframe. So it should be right around here. All right, so now that we have our um, basic idea of how we want to put it on here again, um, we got to figure out a way to uh, mount this thing to the subframe. All right, so what I decided to do uh, to mount uh, our rear fender is, uh, like I said earlier, these two bolts like this. Uh, so there's a couple of things uh, that got to happen. Uh, the steel plate that will weld on the uh, rear fender has to follow the same curve, otherwise it's going to be hard to actually uh, tighten down uh, those bolts. Um, so we first have to uh, get some metal in the shape of the fender so we can weld it on there, have, and then we'll beat it with a hammer so it follows the curve. Uh, after we've done that, we can weld it onto uh, our uh, fender. After that, we'll have to decide where exactly we we're gonna put these bolts make our marks, drill holes slightly bigger than our, uh, the holes in our nuts. So these are eight millimeters, so I guess we'll do nine millimeter or eight and a half or something, so that the bolts can protrude, uh, protrude uh, our uh, nuts and actually go inside of uh, our subframe. So we don't have to use super short bolts. Uh, after that, we'll just drill some holes in the plate that we have welded on our fender. After that, we should be good to go. Uh, so the first thing that I wanna do right now is come up with a plan or a type of plate that we can weld onto our uh, fender and actually uh, use our hammer and beat it to uh, the shape of our subframe, this curve. Uh, so let's get some cardboard first so we can uh, cut a general shape, see where it fits. After that, we'll transfer it to the steel, uh, cut it and bend it. Uh, yeah, let's do it. So this is probably around the same angle. So let's mark like this. All right, I bet we could make this work. That looks pretty good, right? I feel like uh, it would mount more than enough to our 
Um, fender, maybe we'll make it a little bit smaller so you can't see it uh, protruding uh, from the back and the sides. But So we'll maybe cut off those edges, but this looks pretty good. So let's transfer this to some steel. Um, then we'll beat it uh, in the same shape by just basically holding it against uh, the subframe and just uh, tapping it with a hammer. Um, then we'll get back to it. Obviously, uh, I'm not uh, a person you should ask for favors when it comes to uh, metal shaving, but uh, this will definitely work. Uh, so we're going to put the fender back in again, uh, mock it up, then we'll uh, decide where we have to shave uh, this plate. Uh, we'll do that, mock it up again. If it works, we'll start uh, some actual welding. Uh, let's do it. So our fender's uh, back on again, maybe a little bit of a weird angle for you, but um, this is what it looks like uh, from this side. This is the plate that we made and fit quite well. i got to say I'm actually uh, uh, kind of surprised. <laughs> um, but as you can probably also tell right here, this is going to look ugly when you see this. So I'm thinking we're just going to cut this entire part off. So this is what you would see from the side. Um, not too bad, but it would be nice if this was, uh, if there was a little bit less material right here. You wouldn't notice it as much. This is what it looks like from the back. Um, I'm actually kind of fine with that. Um, yeah. Side angle like this. I don't know, what do we do? How much do we actually care? Well, maybe we should just try this and if it's not good, uh, take it off. Now our mic is actually on. Okay. All right, so we have our fender right here. As you can see, there are two lines now, because uh, luckily I remembered uh, we are going to be welding uh, two nuts to the uh, subframe. So the composition would change a little bit. That's why I made the second line. So as you can see, the width of, or the space between the lines is the width of a nut. Also quickly drilled uh, two holes in here. Um, makes life a little bit easier instead of doing that whilst it's already uh, welded on here. Um, so I'm going to give it uh, a quick couple of tack welds. After that, we'll put it back on the bike, uh, see, their, see whether this ID uh, actually works on that. So let's put some weld, uh, welds on these. Right, as you can see, uh, we mounted our fender and we mounted the uh, rear light to that as well. Uh, it's almost in its final stage. The only two things left to do is uh, basically add a couple more welds to the nuts so we can make sure that those uh, are secure and shave down the bolts that we used to uh, put on our rear light. Uh, one other thing that we have to do is actually just polish this up uh, a little bit. Shouldn't be that big of a deal, so uh, now we're moving on to something else, and that's actually installing uh, most of the electronics uh, into our uh, electronics box. So let's take uh, our box out, shove it in there, see if we have to make any changes or not. Uh, after that, we'll polish uh, the rear thing, and we'll be done.
All right, 90% of all the electronics uh, are in our box. And as you can see, I uh, mocked up the seat as well. I had to cut a little bit from the plastic from the underside uh, of the seat because it doesn't really uh, want to fit with the tank. Uh, we have our Ugga Dugga here for some support because as you can see, the seat kind of goes up a bit. All right, so this is uh, how the electronics currently uh, are in here. Uh, I'm not going to put too much effort in this because all of this has, uh, has to come out again when we uh, paint the subframe. But as you can see, there's more than enough space for a battery in the future if you move uh, this around and manage these cables a little bit better. There's uh, definitely more than enough room for battery. Even though that's not uh, one of our plans, uh, at least not for the near future, because uh, it's uh, pretty easy to kick this bike. Um, so it shouldn't be any problem at all, but this is basically what it's going to look like. These two wires uh, have to be, uh, uh, I'm going to add a little bit of length to these two. So we can uh, sneak them in a, a bit more nicer than just this. You can see there's tension on here. Same for the ground wire, I'm going to have to fix that. Other than that, it's pretty much done. Like I said earlier, I had to do some cutting in the seat. Took off uh, some plastic. So this is uh, basically how the seat is going to sit. I think it looks uh, pretty good. It is a super cheap seat, so you can't expect uh, too much from it. As you can see right here, this gap. Can't say that I'm very happy with that, but like I said, a super cheap seat. Um, if you want this to be flush, you either got to be uh, really lucky or just have uh, one custom made for your bike. Uh, that's what I definitely would advise you to do, but for a seat that's uh, practically cheap, I think it's a pretty good alternative. Lights on here as well, looking pretty good. You still have to shave off the bolts. I'm not sure whether you can actually see those right here. Um, yeah, looking pretty good. Right, so unfortunately my GoPro died, so I'm not exactly sure where we left off. Uh, if I remember correctly, correctly, the last thing that we did was uh, make uh, or starting to make a mount for the seat. Uh, we actually did that, that's finished, that's uh, mounted on here. Uh, so, so let's put that on. All right, so as you can see, uh, our seat is on and mounted. Uh, so that's very good, that ain't going anywhere. Uh, we can still pretty easily reach the mount, uh, uh, the mounting point for our fender. So it uh, shouldn't be that big a deal. Already checked with the fender on as well. You can uh, take off the seat without having to take the fender off. So that's uh, pretty neat. So there's a couple of things uh, left to do right now. One of the things is uh, the fender. We still have to uh, polish this thing up because as you can see, uh, it's still a little bit brown orangey from, uh, from uh, the rust on there. So we're gonna clean this thing up. That should look pretty good like that um, and after that I still want to give the electronics box right here another polish uh, we're gonna try and clean it up as much as we can so we have a uh, this uh, a little bit more matching so the fender and uh, our electronics box and in future the front fender as well uh, will kind of match up um, if we can can get this uh, to a nice finish where I feel like it's uh, matched up enough with our fenders I guess we'll just paint it black or uh, another color um, so what I'm going to do right now is uh, polish these two things mock everything up again and I'll see you then So we put everything back together, seats mounted, fender mounted, electronics box uh, mounted as well. As you can see, we polished the uh, electronics box again. It looks uh, way better now. I don't know how I did it, but I got rid of all the dark spots in it. And as you can see, the reflection in it is uh, pretty good. Um, not striving for, for uh, perfection, but I like it to have matched the rear fender a little bit better. Um, the lights hitting it kind of differently right now so this one uh, looks a bit darker than the rear fender but in reality it's uh, practically the same shade so I'm happy with that in the future I hope we can uh, match it uh, with our front fender right there as well 
Um, this is what we have so far. Okay, so at the end of every video in this series, we talk a little bit about all the money that uh, it costs so far. The previous total was two ninety and eighty five cents, I believe. The new total is three hundred thirty one and thirteen cents, and that's because we added the seat and the rear light. Um, very cheap uh, video that's good for me of course um, you can obviously tell that it is a cheap seat so uh, you get what you pay for um, I'm happy with the seat I think it looks good definitely for uh, so, such a small budget that we have but if I were to have a bigger budget I would definitely have something uh, custom made to uh, fit a little bit better with our tank but uh, for how cheap it is I'm actually uh, pretty pleased uh, with the state that it's in so in the next episode, uh, I of course want to uh, continue working on the bike. Uh, I want to tackle a couple of things in the front. So we want to install a new gauge, new headlight, adjust the fender, uh, new handlebars, grip, stuff like that. Um, so if you're interested uh, in this uh, build series that we're doing or in the future videos that I'm going to make, definitely don't uh, forget to subscribe. Um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, uh, I hope uh, you'll let me know uh, why. And if you didn't, definitely don't. Uh, definitely <laughs> let me know why. Uh, and I'll uh, try and make a better video for you in the future. Uh, for now, I want to thank you very much for watching. And uh, yeah, I'll see you at the next one.